Since 2000, 20 Japanese or Japanese-born scientists have won a Nobel Prize in Natural Science for a total of 15 accolades. It's the most among Asian countries during that period and ranked second in the world behind just the United States. This period coincided with what's known as the lost decades of Japan. How did Japan science scale new height despite its lackluster economic performance? Why do Japanese scientists think the winning streak may not last? This quiet corner of the University of Tokyo has achievements that belie its seemingly laid-back atmosphere. The Kashiwa campus boasts two Nobel Prizes in physics. Entering the Institute for Cosmic Ray Research, visitors are welcomed by its two stars. One is this giant light bulb, the optical sensor behind the Institute's Nobel-winning discoveries. The other is Professor Takaki Kajita, a Nobel laureate in physics. I'm Michio Ishida, CNA's Japan correspondent. I want to find out more about the secret behind Japan's astounding scientific achievements in the 21st century, as demonstrated by the many Nobel Prizes that have been awarded to Japanese scientists. I am hoping the story of Professor Kajita and the work that he is doing here at the University of Tokyo will help me find the answer. Hey, minasan, konnichiwa. Professor Kajita dedicated his entire academic career chasing neutrinos, a type of elementary particles that's also known as ghost particles. In 2015, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics along with Canadian physicist Arthur MacDonald for the discovery of neutrino oscillations. The phenomenon proves that neutrinos have mass. The Nobel Committee called it a discovery that has opened a door towards more comprehensive understanding of the universe we live in. In 1981, when Professor Kajita was a young graduate student, he joined a research project known as the Kamio Kande, headed by the other Tokyo University Nobel laureate in physics, Professor Masatoshi Koshiba. Professor Koshiba wanted to improve the Kamio Kande detector so that he can observe solar neutrinos. Kamio Kande was improved to be able to observe solar neutrinos. Then, soon after this improvement, a supernova neutrino burst was observed. Kamio Kande is a neutrino observatory located in the Kamioka mountain village more than 300 kilometers from Tokyo. In 1996, the facility was upgraded to be the Super Kamio Kande. Today, it represents the highest level of research on neutrinos in the world. A giant tank buried 1,000 meters below ground, Super Kamio Kande is a sight to behold. Covered with some 13,000 optical sensors, also known as the photomultiplier tubes that are submerged in ultra-pure water. Together they form the world's most powerful detector. It's so sensitive it can detect the light of a candle on the moon. And it's with the help of this engineering feat, the team led by Professor Kajita detected neutrino oscillations, overturning existing understandings about the history and future of the cosmos. So this is the first version? Yes. In Professor Kajita's office, models of the Kamio Kande and various phases of development are on display. It says of the importance of the engineering capabilities that went into the construction of the facility, without which uh, yes. Professor Kajita and his team uh, won't have been able to capture the elusive particles and prove his theory of neutrinos oscillations. Intrigued by the technological prowess that enabled the scientific breakthroughs at the University of Tokyo, I decided to visit Hamamatsu City in central Japan to find out more. 
The uninitiated may find Hamamatsu Photonics unimpressive, but the company is a giant in the global photonics market. Employees here make equipment that's crucial behind many Nobel-winning discoveries, both in Japan and abroad. Entering its lobby, one will immediately recognize the crown jewel of Hamamatsu. These photomultiplier tubes are the same as those buried 1,000 meters underground inside the Super Kamiokande in Kamioka in Gifu Prefecture, 270 kilometers away. Without these, Japanese physicists at the University of Tokyo, pioneered by Professor Masatoshi Koshiba, would not have been able to achieve the breakthroughs that would overturn scientists' understanding of the universe. Hisaki Kato had just joined the company when the production of the first-generation neutrino detector took off. そうすると20メートルっていうと、えっと、気圧がやっぱりそれなりの深さになりますので、え、水圧ですか水圧がすごい高い水圧の中。その中でもガラス壊れやすいガラスが壊れない形状にするとか、超純水なもんですから、その水
For years, Nagoya University was under the shadow of other top Japanese universities, such as University of Tokyo and University of Kyoto. But as Japan entered the 21st century, Nagoya University has risen from relative obscurity to international prominence with its impressive hall of Nobel accolades. To decipher the secret behind Japan's scientific success in the last two decades, I came to Nagoya University. Since 2000, six professors and alumni of the university have been awarded the Nobel Prize. Some of the structures on its campus are named after those scientists. Inside, replicas of their labs and equipment used for experiments that won them the accolades are on display. As I tour its Nobel Hall of Fame, helping me understand the significance of each of the findings is Naoshi Sugiyama, president of Nagoya University. Real research. Mr. Sugiyama, a respected physicist himself, attributes the university's achievements to its free and equal academic atmosphere. We have an environment we can freely discuss each other. In Japanese society, we have sort of have a hierarchy usually. So professor is like a professor, really, really, you know, great person, <laughs> and, uh, you know, student is like a slave or something. <laughs> but uh, it's not the case in this, in this university. Mr. Sugiyama, who began his six-year tenure in April 2022, said his mission is to make Nagoya an institute of choice for the world's best mind, as he expects more Nobel-winning research to be done here. We would like to get the best graduate student, best junior faculties, and best professors. For that, you know, we have to change our own environment in, into English. If I want to get the top level professors from the United States or even from Singapore, our salary do not match, right? So, so I, have to, I have to double the salary, for example. These reforms, you know, some new scheme is just uh, start to run uh, to make this university you know, become truly the international competitive. One of Nagoya University's brightest stars is Hiroshi Amano. Professor Amano was awarded a Nobel Prize in Physics in 2014 for inventing the blue light-emitting diodes, which enabled bright and energy-saving white light sources. He shared the award with his mentor Isamu Akasaki and Japanese-born American Shuji Nakamura. With about one-fourth of world electricity consumption used for lighting purposes, the highly energy-efficient LEDs contribute to enormous saving in energy as countries confront a climate crisis. Yes. What is yes. your impression? I caught up with yes. Professor yes. Amano in <laughs> Nagoya. He has There's been working with the private sector to develop the next generation of semiconductor devices. And we, we are searching for the partner who will develop a new technology, a high power device applications. So in such a case, uh, of course, the many company people are interested in our technology. However, for manufacturing, we need a lot of money. <laughs> that, that's why the the company people are hesitating to collaborate with us. So the research level, it is OK. But manufacturing, it's a different stage. I'm studying about um, raising the next generation of inventors has been the other focus of Professor Amano. I followed three of his students to their office on the campus of Nagoya University where they are working on the prototype of a pair of safety goggles. The award-winning design is made specifically for researchers like themselves. We want to get uh, international patent, uh, like in America, China, or any other European countries. And so it's, a, it's our uh, goal uh, of these devices, yeah. 
Japan lags behind not just the United States but also China and India in producing unicorns or unlisted billion-dollar startup companies. To catch up, the Kishida government announced in 2022 a startup development five-year plan pledging to invest 10 trillion yen or about 67 billion dollars, create 100,000 new startups and support 100 unicorns by 2027. Through another 10 trillion yen government fund, which has been managed by the Japan Science and Technology Agency since 2021, it also pledged to support young researchers, strengthen research infrastructure in emerging fields, and promote university reform. This amid growing concerns among Japanese scientists that the country's research capacity has been on a decline. Located in the Roppongi district in the heart of Tokyo, the Science Council of Japan is the most prestigious academic institution in the country. One of its missions is to make proposals concerning science to the government. Established in 1949 on the Pledge of Academic Independence, it's been given a special status in the Constitution to break away from Japan's pre-war academic system, where scholars were recruited by the military government for its war efforts. In 2020, the Council, which is under the Prime Minister's jurisdiction and funded by the national budget, became embroiled in a bitter battle with then-Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga. In an unprecedented move, Mr. Suga rejected recommendations by the council on its appointment of six scholars to the 210-member body. Professor Masanori Okada of Waseda University is an expert in public law. He was one of six scholars whose names were crossed out by Mr. Suga from the Science Council list. メモ No explanation was given on why he and the other five nominees were rejected. Local media reports noted that the six scholars had one thing in common, that they all had a record of criticizing the security policies of Mr. Suga's predecessor. Professor Okada said he has noticed a change in the relationship between the government and the Science Council since as early as 2016. He wrote a book on the issue, and it was published in 2022. <laughs> 国の中の独立した機関として、ま、ま、そういう Professor Takaaki Kajita of the University of Tokyo was the president of the Science Council at the time. He came out and spoke against Mr. Suga's decision strongly. Apart from the threat of losing its independence, he resonates with Professor Okada's concern for the declining quality of Japanese research. Many of the recent Japanese Nobel Prize were based on the research, say, before year 2000, 
certainly Japan was number two in the number of papers in the world, but now the number of papers from Japan is decreasing. In particular, the, say, top 10 high quality paper is decreasing rapidly. So I cannot be optimistic about the future uh, Japanese uh, Nobel Prize. Mm. According to a government report, other alarming trends cited in surveys of university faculty members include the declining number of graduate course students and stagnating research funds. Really young children, they are interested in science. Still, many students study, for example, physics in undergraduate course. However, somehow they feel that graduate course studies may not be very attractive for them. Therefore, many talented students do not go to the uh, graduate course or PhD course. This is a serious problem for in Japan now. That is operated by... Me. In reality, instead of fighting the government, Professor Kajita would very much prefer to focus on his research project. His latest endeavor involves detecting and observing gravitational waves, a field that has been described by scientists as the one final piece of homework from Albert Einstein since he developed the general theory of relativity. In my journey to understand Japan's Nobel Prize boom in the early part of the 21st century, I learned that it's the dedication and perseverance of generations of scientists built upon a firm belief in academic independence for the betterment of humanity that enabled the series of breakthroughs. Still, they would not have made it if not for conducive government policies and a private sector that's committed to ultimate excellence. But Japan's science has come to a crossroad. Whether a new generation of scientists and inventors will come forth to take over the baton in the decades to come may very well depend on what the government is doing today.